Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together.com, the best place to learn game design and development with Game Maker Studio. Check out my website for my three course bundle to take beginners to experts in no time. In this tutorial, I want to talk about the rest of the camera functions that I haven't really discussed in this series. If this is your first time watching this video in a series about cameras, then go back to the beginning because I cover pretty much everything you need to know about how to use cameras in Game Maker with projects, examples, and a lot of discussion on it. This video is going to be basically for people who want to just know the rest of the functions that are out there with a little bit of explanation, but not a whole lot of show. I'm going to be going through the manual, just looking at some of the functions we didn't talk about, and also talk about the things that are entwined with cameras, but that we also didn't really touch on, but that I might do more videos on in the future. So let's jump right into that. Now, the manual here we've already looked at and we've gone through, you understand what cameras are by this point. And we've actually used most of the functions inside of here because we've done a lot of stuff with cameras. There's just a few that we haven't and that's what I want to cover. So under the general camera functions, the only one we didn't use was camera apply. And what this function does is take the settings from one camera and apply it to the camera that you're currently on. Now, to actually know which camera you're on, you have to go into the draw event and check the view current, and that will give you the ID of which view you're currently looking at. And that's because as the game goes on, it has to cycle through all the different views that are open, draw the things and do the events for the cameras. So the draw event is where you actually figure out which camera you're on. Now, I've never had a reason for this because when I make a camera, I set it up with each of the properties that I'm gonna want. So this whole camera applying to a specific one that you're on and running, I haven't really come across an instance where I need to do that, but it's important to know that you can. So you can use this function anywhere, but you probably need to do it in the draw event simply because otherwise you won't actually know that you, which one you're on. So that's camera apply for you. And then we move down to the camera setters. Now we've used almost all of it. Well, we've used about half of them and that's because the other ones really aren't that useful. The top two here, view mat and projection mat are matrix functions. That means that you have to actually go in and build a matrix and that is for 3D games, which I'm not gonna talk about because 3D games are not something that I have a lot of familiarity with. And personally, if I was gonna build a 3D game, I would go and do Unreal Engine or Unity, something more dedicated to 3D and more specialized in that area. I use Game Maker because it's easy to use and it's great at 2D games, which is what I want to make right now. But you can do 3D games with it and these are the functions to do it. So if you're curious, go look that up on YouTube because there'll be other YouTubers who have great tutorials on it. So those two we're not gonna use. Then the update, begin, and end script. This is when you can actually assign a script to a camera and have it run that at different times. So there's the update, begin, and end. So three different times you can have your script, three different scripts you can actually be running at any given time. Now, I wasn't able to find a good example of what to use this on. If you have, definitely let me know in the comments because I'd be very curious to hear about it. But for me, if I'm going to do something with my camera, I'm going to do it when I create it or in a specific time like a cutscene. I don't need to actually have my camera running a script 60 times a second to check for something. So I didn't find this extremely useful, but there might be times where you can and that now you know about it. Your cameras can run scripts, which is pretty cool. Then the rest of them we used already, so you should know the rest of those. The last one is the default. So when your game starts up, it uses a camera. Even if you haven't assigned it any, it has to have a camera to have something on screen. So you can set the default of what all of the other rooms are gonna use of which camera to use. Now, there's a couple different ways to do this. You can actually use this function here to use one specific camera for the default for all of the rooms, or you can go in like I did in my advanced turn-based combat course, and each room before you go to it, you can actually set the views to be enabled, set the camera, and then set the viewport as well. So these room functions, we didn't really talk about, and that's because they are not specifically camera functions. Rooms, views, and cameras kind of all mesh together, but they're also separate. 
So if you want to see more content on room functions, let me know, leave a comment down below, and I will add that to a list of tutorials to make. But if you want to just have one room in your game, like I did in this, I just have my room init set up that it's using cameras and I set up the viewport there. And then in every other room I go into, there's no cameras or anything in there. I set it right before I move into, that's what the script is doing, I'm warping to that room, and I set my minimap and the primary camera right here and there before I go into that room. So that ensures that my view and my cameras are gonna be set up when I move into it, so there's no time in between where there's something wrong or skewed or nothing on the screen. So that's really nice. But these can only be used in rooms that you're not currently in, which is why I haven't really done anything with them in the series so far, because I wanted to talk about cameras and playing around with them in the rooms we're in. But if you need to set cameras and views for rooms you're moving into, this is the function you're gonna to want to look at, room set, all right? And that is another way of doing it besides camera set default. So there's a couple different ways you can. The getters are things that we've already talked about as well. They're just the opposite of the setters. So when you want to get a property, that's how you do it. There are a lot more getters than setters, and that's because when you get information, you want to get just one piece at a time. So something like the get view speed x here, you set the speed with the camera set view speed, but you actually set it the X and the Y, but you wouldn't want to get both the X and the Y in one variable. It wouldn't make any sense. So for a lot of these, you have to use two gets and only one set. That's why there's more of them. Now there's view variables and view functions down here. We actually used most of these view set ones already, so you're pretty familiar with them. The view get ones are gonna be very similar. That's for, well, when you wanna get information about the specific view. The only things we didn't really talk about were the view camera and view current, the surface ID, and actually, yeah, that's about it. The surface ID is the last one. So the view camera is actually an array that holds all of the cameras assigned to all of the different views that you have in your game. So if you're not holding that information in a global variable yourself, you can access it here, which is kind of cool. Again, you can have up to eight different views, and so this has an array of zero through seven, and you can figure out which one is assigned to which one, if you ever need that. Uh, the view current, we already talked about. And the view surface ID goes a little bit beyond what I wanted to cover in this series because you can have uh, different contents be drawn to different portions of surfaces. And I'm not gonna get into specific surfaces because that's a whole nother playlist of videos. But if you wanna hear about those, definitely let me know as well and I'll look into that. But the view surfaces is something that goes beyond the scope. Just know that everything on your screen is a surface and you can change the surfaces, you can add more surfaces. There's a lot you can do there. There's some very awesome tutorials out there when it comes to surfaces because surfaces are a really fantastic way of putting things on the screen if you do it manually and then you can leave them there. So you can do things like blood on walls or gunshots, things that stay in there and you can just draw that surface and it's very lightweight and very minimal. It's really cool. And that's pretty much everything that you need to know about cameras. If you followed this series from the beginning, you should be an expert on game maker cameras and be able to do whatever you want in whichever project you're working on. I hope that's been very helpful. If you liked this video or this series, please leave a like and a comment. Let me know what you loved about it. I love hearing from you guys. If you liked this video and you wanna see more content from me, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so YouTube will actually tell you when I put out new content. You can expect more videos from me every Monday and Friday morning. And until then, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later. A huge thank you to all of my patrons who go above and beyond in being awesome and supporting me on Patreon. If you enjoyed this content and you want to see more from me, please consider supporting me on Patreon.